All right, now that our films are printed, we're ready to go to the screen making process. Now I assume you already know how to make screens because you probably do that every day in your screen printing operation, but because of the complexities of four color process and simulated process work, we want to dive into the detail and show you some best practices so you can get the best results in prints without having to go back and remake screens later. Let's start with the mesh. While standard mesh does work just fine, we're also going to be using some thin thread mesh for this video. Thin thread allows more ink to go through due to the smaller thread diameter which provides a wider micron opening for the ink to flow, but retains the mesh count for detail retention. For our four color process job, we'll be using a standard 305 mesh with Saudi high tech 40 micron thread, which provides a 38 micron opening. For our thin thread mesh, we're gonna be using a 230 mesh stretched on the saw lock frame. This is a 40 micron mesh, which gives us a 70 micron opening. Now this is perfect for the spot process design because we need more ink to flow through the mesh in order to mat down the fibers of the shirt. And because our ink is opaque, using a white underbase and overprint colors that need to stick to that underbase, we're gonna be using a thin thread for our spot process design. The only downside to thinner thread meshes is that they are a lot more delicate and cannot hold as high of tension. Typically, I look at using them for specialty jobs or specific applications. For our 230 mesh screens for this job, we're going to be using our saw lock screens. These hold a higher tension and stretch consistently to 28 newtons even though we're using thin thread. The tighter tension will release the ink better and allow for lower off contact. If you're using self-tensioning screens, you will be able to get higher tensions and get better results on press. For static frames, on the 305 mesh, I recommend at least 18 newtons of tension, which these screens right here come in right under 19, so they're good to go. With a little bit lower, thicker thread mesh on a static frame 230, I would recommend at least 19 newtons of minimum tension. Once the screens are stretched, I'm going to protect my screens on the outside of the screen by taping around the mesh to ensure the frames are not damaged or punctured in the critical areas. When it comes to degreasing, there's nothing special about the degreasing process other than to ensure it's thoroughly degreased. We're going to be using the cryocoat emulsion for this job because we're printing with water-based and plastisol. Since we're using cryocoat, cryo prep works best for degreasing. What I mean by being thorough is we want to make sure that the screen and the frame are degreased and rinsed so no suds work their way back into the mesh. For the coating process, we're going to be switching things up just a little bit. Instead of doing a 1 over 1 or a 1 over 2, we're going to be doing a 2 over 2 to ensure that our emulsion works its way around the knuckles of the mesh and retains that detail as well as gives us a good EOM. We're going to be using the sharp side of the scoop coater because we don't need too high of an EOM. I also start on the outside of the screen, then rotate the mesh upside down on the inside of the screen. This allows the emulsion to pass into the mesh at different angles, making a stronger bond around the knuckles. Now I rotate the screen one more time to do one more coat on the outside and then one more coat on the inside, pushing the emulsion or EOM to the outside of the mesh. Finally, I check to ensure I have a glossy, smooth surface and I'm done. For drying these high detail screens, we're not going to put them directly in front of a forced air fan. This can slightly blow the emulsion like wind blowing water over a lake and creates waves in it. Instead, we're going to be using our screen room drying cabinet to ensure a fast and even dry. Note our screen room is at 35% humidity. Now our screens are dry. They feel dry, but to verify this, to make an amazing screen, we're going to be using a moisture meter to ensure that the screens are completely dry. Meter is reading in the green range, which means these guys are bone dry. If it was up in the yellow or the red range, it means that we would need to let it dry for longer. The best way to expose a high detail screen is by using a single source light exposure unit like our FX LED exposure system. Single source light hits the screen directly and does not cross expose or cross hash any half tones as you can see from this diagram here. In order to properly make strong screens, we want to expose it for the proper amount of time. So in order to make the best screens and capture all the half tones, both the high percentage open and closed half tones, we would definitely recommend using a single light source exposure unit. However, if you are using a multi-point exposure unit, here are a few things you can do. First, you can lower your exposure time. This will avoid cross-hatching the small and open end half tones, but will leave the screen slightly underexposed, which means pinhole problems and emulsion breakdown can occur. Lower your LPI. So instead of printing a 65, go to a 50 or 55. Or instead of going from a 50, go to a 40 or 45. The bigger dots are easier to expose. When exposing our screens, we're going to be using two different types of exposure calculators to ensure proper exposure and halftone retention. We're using a basic pre-registration template to ensure that our films are in the same position. Once films are placed, I thoroughly inspect my exposure surface to ensure that all dust and dirt are gone and we have a clean surface. You don't want any pinholes in process work as they can be very hard to spot within the halftones. Now we'll expose our screens for 8 seconds on the FX exposure unit and examine our results. When rinsing screens, ensure that you get them wet and have the proper time to develop them. 
when you rinse, use a stream of water and not a pressure washer. Rinse from the bottom of the image to the top so the detail gets hit with fresh water. I like rinsing on the outside instead of the inside because I feel the detail is held better on the outside of the mesh. After the screens are dry, I use a light table and a loop. I'm looking for half tone retention in the calibration bars. Here I can see all the closed and open end dots are exposed just fine under a 10x loop. Success! We made a great screen, now we tape and go to press. Notice again I'm using the Tadpole tape cutter both on the inside as I did on the outside of the mesh. I leave my registration marks open until the job is registered.